Hi everyone, Gav Whitaker here. Just wanted to make a quick video because a picture says a thousand words to help you understand what the process of running VRAMer or Parallaxer end-to-end -end should be like for you. And then if something looks and feels different or you don't get one of the output files that you're expecting, then you can share your log file with me and we can take it from there. So very quickly, I've got VRAMer loaded. I will say again, as I've said in the uh, documentation on the mod page, guys, it's super important how you actually open VRAMer or Parallaxer. So in MO2, you need to create a run link like we do with the great tools that we know, Dindelod, Xedit, TextGen, Nemesis, any of those tools we create a run link for, and then we run the application from within MO2. Very quickly, it's important because that's how we expose your personal mods in a virtual file system to the game and to those modding engines like Dindelod TextGen. Vortex does it differently, but it's still incredibly important where you open that. We do that from the open game mods folder. The reason is that VRAMer starts looking for the right files from that location. So if you run vramer.exe or parallaxer.exe from its actual mod folder, it won't be able to find your mods. It won't find any BSAs. It won't have anything to process. So I just wanted to really touch on the importance of launching these tools from the right location. So as you can see, we've got that VRAMer loaded up. And the very first question that a lot of people talk about is, I cannot find my VRAMer log file. So it should be on the desktop. We're finding that a lot of people have either got spaces in their username that they log into Windows with, or they've actually moved their Windows desktop to a different location, whether it's on a OneDrive, onto a shared network resource. Um, I'm not going to be modifying the code to cater for that small percentage of people. What we're actually finding is that you can just, in your user profile, go and create a desktop folder and temporarily that will allow you to have a VRAM log appear and then you can share that with me if you have any problems. So by opening um, VRAM or Parallaxer in the right folder, like we talked about earlier, um, then we get visibility of your actual mods. Now, it's also important to say that some folks actually have Skyrim VR, Skyrim AE, maybe even SE. So more than one version of Skyrim loaded into their mod organizer. So it is very important that you actually run VRAMer for the version of the game and therefore in the correct MO2 profile or Vortex profile that you want to run VRAMer on. If you do it on a different profile version, then it will optimize the files for those for, uh, for that game. And um, you know you might want to do that eventually. I just wanted to flag that it's important that you do it. Um, you run the, the, these mods for the profile you need. So in my case, as you can see on the screen, it's for Skyrim VR. So it's saying to me, do you want to optimize the normal maps just for Skyrim VR? So in this case, I absolutely do. And it's saying that I've confirmed that and it writes that to the log file. And then at this point, it goes away and it does some analysis. It's actually trying to find out how many files, how much space I've actually got that will consume. And in this case, it's telling me that um, the size on the disk that I need to make sure I've got spare available for processing is 23 gig and then as we can clearly say it's suggesting that we add at least another five gig to that now the reason is that windows doesn't like going below a certain percentage of available free space it will start to cough and splutter itself so it, whilst we're trying to navigate skyrim having problems we certainly don't want to cause you any windows problems so um, make sure you've got plenty of space available. And if you need to do it on a different drive, then that's fine. The only thing I would say is whilst I've tested it and it seems to work absolutely fine on SD cards and USB, they're going to be slower. And whilst this first part of the process, the VRAMer prepare part of the process, 
might seem pretty quick on an SD or USB stick. Um, the second piece, the creation piece, the optimization of the textures is going to take hmm, quite some time. So um, avoid USB SD unless it's absolutely necessary and hopefully you can find sufficient free space based on what you're seeing on the screen here. Now, most people have free space on their desktop, but I just wanted to show you what happens if you press no. So here we go, N. So it's saying that the pop-up window will come up. The default selection is the Windows desktop. So first thing I want to pop out, uh, highlight, is that desktop is highlighted. So if we was to click OK now, that would be the equivalent of just pressing yes a moment ago. Alternatively, we can go and find our drives. You see I have a dedicated drive just for Skyrim VR here and with quite a few mods on it. Um, but this is where we can highlight a different directory. So, and as I hover over it, we can see how much free space. So I've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to select a drive, and remember where that's going to. Now I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to do it on the desktop. So I'll click OK. And it's saying it can't find the specified file. Don't worry about that. That's just part of um, some of the code and what it's looking for, and it's fine. User is selected to prepare VRAM of files at desktop. So we're good. And it's now saying that it's about to extract all the net normal maps from your BSA archives. So this is just going to take three, four, five minutes. So we'll leave it to it. Um, it's a two-stage process. BSA extraction is one thing, and then we, pro we, we copy your loose files separately. But what does that mean? It means that VRAMA is about to optimize every single one of your normal maps across your entire game. Now, doing that manually, using some of the other tools like Cathedral, wonderful outcome. Great optimization, get your mit maps, mit maps done and all of that. Um, this tool just does it in a much more automated fashion for you. So um, is there a benefit of using one over the other? If you want to do it manually, go use those other tools. If you're looking for an end-to-end -end solution where you can almost set it and forget it, walk away, then that's the intention of vRammer is to help with that. So that's my BSAs done. We've now got the question at the bottom. Do you want to exclude optimizing interiors and clutter? Let me just explain why we've done this. So um, actors such as giants is a great example. We don't want to be reducing the quality of the large actors like giants or mammoths, dragons, the mountains, obviously, from a distance. And when you get close up, need to look reasonably good. You don't want to reduce the quality on those. So by default, I've made sure that those files are not optimized because we just don't want to drag down the visual quality of your game unnecessarily. And out of the thousands of normal maps that we are optimizing, skipping some is not such a bad thing. We are, at the end of the day, about to free up a significant amount of VRAM anyway. Um, excluding uh, the interiors and the clutter, Many of us find it's a bit different in Skyrim VR just because of the way VRAM utilization works. But uh, many of us find that we go inside a smaller world space, a dungeon, a mine uh, in the game, and everything becomes silky smooth and it's delightful. And therefore, you might dis decide that you don't want to optimize interiors in any way. Um, personally, in VR, I do because I just find that the visual degradation is not that damaging at any stretch, unless I go and hug a wall or um, a, a tree or something like that. That's when I can tell a little bit. But the, the truth is, as I'm actually playing the game, rather kind of doing screen archer mode, where I'm looking for problems after the back of putting a new mod in, for example, but where I'm actually running around, killing the bad guys and playing the game, um, I just don't notice any visual degradation. Um, but it's up to you whether we optimize interiors and clutter or not. I'm going to say yes, just to re so we reduce the time scale here. So that's working through. So it's preparing to copy. Uh, at any point, you can press a key to continue. But it's always good to give it a good few seconds just to let your operating system get ahead of itself. Okay. So 
Um, this will take a few moments because there's a much larger amount of loose files in your modded Skyrim than the typically is BSA um, archived files. But these are being copied to your VRAMer folder now that in our case we selected to do on the desktop. That could be in drive E, drive D, based on where you select. So why are we doing a copy? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is you can't run um, the optimization tool uh, directly from within MO2. Uh, it causes virtual file system errors. So by taking a copy, it allows us to actually make sure that we're not stepping on the toes of the virtual file system crashing this process. The second reason is we would never want to be doing this directly on your game files. I mean, even if you was to take a backup before you did this, personally, I would always want to do it on a copy. So, you know, it seems like 99.9% .9 of people that are running this tool understand that um, in the fact that they would want to be running it directly. They would like to do it on a copy. Um, and also that they don't want to be running a backup before they do this every time. So um, what we can see now, I'll just minimize it for a moment out of the way, is that the process is completed. It's saying that VRAM is finished. This window will close shortly. You can see the countdown, six, five. So it's telling you what you need to do there. And then it's also opened this window on the right-hand side. So let's maximize that now. Now, you can see a VRAM a create dot that. That's because I'm the developer and the, the back file is where all the code is going. Um, the create folder is where the textures actually are. So this is where your B extracted BSAs and your loose files have all been copied into. Now at the moment, we right click on this and go into properties. We can see well, that's rather large, yeah? Um, and you're probably wondering why is it a bit less than the projected amount? That's again, something to do with what I've been doing in the background with some tests and some modifications on the code. But typically that projected amount of required disk space, I suggest that you use that as your basis rather than uh, thinking that you can shave three or four gig off because Gav's done that on his video. So um, these aren't optimized yet. You might also be wondering what this is about. This is to help my code. This is so if you have an existing VRAMer output installed into your mod manager, let's say that you decided to optimize your, your normal maps at 1K, and then you decided actually, they look pretty good, the visual degradation at 1K is great, I'm gonna try 512, then if you still ran VRAMer with that uh, 1K output file activated, VRAMer would give you an error. Why? Because it would be copying those as your source files. And if your source files are truly 2K or 4K, you don't want to be taking your 1K files as your source. So I've done that to protect us. If VRAMer, when it opens, detects that you've got an existing output activated, the screen goes red, you get an error, it tells you to deactivate it and rerun VRAMer. So hopefully that gives you a steer. Now, guys, I'm going to give you a tip now. This one's useful. Um, if you want to do a test run, if you just want to make sure that the whole end-to-end -end process is running quite nice, then inside your Create Textures folder, you can do a Control A, which selects everything. And if you hold down the Control key, and I find the Armor folder is a good selection, you have highlighted everything but Armor. Now, delete that. I'm going to hit the Del key on my keyboard. Whoa, here we go, 17 gig, and a lot about to go into deletion. But yeah, that's fine on this occasion. What this means is, when we run the create process now, I'm not going to have to sit and talk to you for an hour <laughs> whilst um, we actually optimize those files. What I've done is now selected a much smaller amount of files, 247 files. I think that they'll go through within about three or four minutes. That will give me time to explain a few more bits to you. And hopefully by the end of this process, you'll be content that everything's going as it should. So you do want to run the exe file, the VRAMer create exe file. In the temp folder, you should have those three files. Text A is how we do the actual optimization on the folder, sorry, on, on your files. And the 7-zip, this is the portable version of 7-zip. I would also suggest that you go and install the full-blown version of 7-zip 
or WinRAR, something to help you manage your mods within MO2 and Vortex a little bit easier. And one thing that I really like about 7-Zip is how we can actually use the ultra compression. So when we upload mods onto Nexus, for example, I ultra compress them just so your download time is less. Anyway, let's go back into here and run vramer create. Oh, before we do that, welcome to my messy desktop, the life of a developer. But there we go, vramer.log. This is what we expect to find. It appends to this file over time. So every time you run vramer, it will add to it. So you might want to keep an eye on the size of this growing file. Yes, it can go into early megabytes fairly quickly, especially by the time it's collecting all of the robocopy. Here we go. Pages and pages of that stuff that if you have a problem, I need to be able to see and stuff like that. Anyway, that log file is very important to help me to help you if you're having issues. So please do share that with me. At the very least, screenshots of this kind of first bit. I need to see that you're running the game in the right way, that you're choosing your directories, that we've got enough space and so on. So let's go and run create. So this is the second and most lengthy part of the process. Now we have only got the armors to process and it doesn't matter how long it's going to really take now based on whether I select high quality, quality performance or extreme, because we are resizing and we are going to use a lot of your CPU and we're going to use some of your GPU wherever possible. If you was to go into task manager, if you was to go into uh, GPU monitoring within the performance tab there, you will see that not only is your CPU getting a hammering, but your GPU is getting used or hopefully is being used this tool does its best to make good use of your GPU where it can. So in this case, just to keep time as simple as possible, I'm going to go for P. You're probably thinking, why is he not going for extreme? Let's just not compress it down too long. We're going to give the algorithm some extra work to do there. To do that. So we've selected P, which is 512. I'm going to wait for a few seconds and then we're going to kick it off. This is the beginning of the optimization process. So first thing to call out here is 247 files. That's just the contents of the armor folder. We deleted all the other folders, remember? You will see a much larger number there. And for that reason, it will take a lot longer as well. But for the purpose of this demonstration, folks, let's just press enter and wait for the magic to kick in. Here we go. So it's starting. Now along the top bar of the window, we can get some details. Old escape to stop if you really, really need to, but obviously that's going to cancel the process. Used threads. My AMD has 24 threads available, and I've asked the software to make full use of all of those, which suggests you should not be using your computer while this process is happening. In fact, for any of you that use the wonderful process lasso, I would suggest you go into Keep Awake and actually tell it to keep it awake whilst it's happening, just so it doesn't go to sleep and <laughs> you come to the system in the morning potentially or in two hours and it's gone to sleep and it's only 20% through because that's how um, we swear easy in life. So um, we are now down to 109. So this test with the armors folder is a good little test for everybody. Now, if you press spacebar or enter or click in the window at this point, it appears to pause. It is actually doing some stuff in the background, but you don't really want to do that. So at this point, I'll stress, we do not click the X to close this window in the top right hand corner. Instead, we just press spacebar or enter again and let the application catch up. There we go. It's now scrolling again because I pressed the spacebar on the keyboard. So um, what am I saying? Don't press any keys while this process running through. 20 files to go, there we go, counting down rapidly. We can see that it's deciding what to recompress these files into. Not only is it compressing them to 512 if it needs to, if the file is already smaller than the resolution 512, it's not upscaling, guys, it's only downscaling. This is an optimization tool, not something to cause a different set of issues. So um, this is downscaling only. And then it will look 
at the type of file that it's actually processing to determine, do I need to do it as a BC7? Do I do it as a BC3? Um, you know, and that's based on alpha channels and all sorts of details like that. So this is a pretty swift um, process in terms of deciding what to do with the files. The only thing is that because we're doing it in such bulk across your entire mode load, uh, mod load up order, it takes a while. Anyway, complete, successfully processed, 247 files. If you have some files that have not been processed, guys, don't worry, yeah? Um, either they are BSA files, that's fine, or um, for some reason, um, it took a look at this file and it decided, I'm not gonna touch it, I could break it, could cause you problems, maybe it's a cube map, for example, and it doesn't wanna do cube maps. So there's a variety of reasons why files are skipped. If for some reason it decides to crash out halfway through, then just make sure you've not got your mod manager open. That is super important. As we were saying earlier about uh, load on the system and the virtual file system, especially with MO2, um, just make sure that you've got all your other applications closed. It's not falling to sleep or anything like that. Okay, now, some people have thought at this point that it's all done, it's dusted. Um, it's not. There's still one more stage of the process to go, and you still need to press a key on your keyboard. So we'll press enter, and this is when the screen changes, and now you can see that it's building that zip file. Now, it won't take long to build the zip file, guys, because ultimately we've reduced the size of your textures folder in your VRAMer folder on the desktop significantly. So read what's there. It's telling you what to do. You can go and install that VRAMer output folder into your mod manager. We'll go and do that in a second. You will then activate it. There's no ESPs, no scripts. You don't need to worry about anything like that. And then you can delete that temp folder if you want to. Um, so we'll press spacebar. We're back to the desktop. We will go into our VRAMer folder. I'll maximize it. There is the output. We can see it's a 512 output. And we can also go into our textures folder now. Remember earlier, it was just shy of 18 gigabytes, 80 meg now. So if anyone is wondering how we get rid of all of those stutters and how we make your Skyrim so much slicker using this process, it's because we're taking 18 gig of normal map files which are loaded into the game on demand, into your graphics card, and we've reduced them down using a clever tool that actually tries to retain as much quality uh, on, on, on the definition and fidelity of those normal maps as possible. And we've got 80, map, uh, 80 gig as the outcome. So it's pretty swift. Then we can go and install that into our mod manager. So the way I do it is just Drag and drop, he says. Drag and drop. And I'm just going to call it test because I'll be deleting it after this video. And boom, done. The only thing I would suggest is that you send that to your highest priority, which means it goes right to the bottom. Now, just a few things. I do have a few textures that I really like the fidelity to be higher on. So I move my VRAMer output just above those. As you can see, the main one is a landscape texture for me by Fuchsia, uh, which is absolutely epic. Uh, the wet mud texture, it looks brilliant in Skyrim VR as well. Uh, the way it reflects the, the flames and the waters and things like that. So I'm hoping that that's giving you a 25 minute, sorry it took that long, end to end idea of what to expect. Um, and we'll pick up with questions and things from there. But thank you everyone for watching and uh, I hope this really helps you.